Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I know you all are gonna love this one because this is gonna be a continuation of our autopilot gardening series. Now you guys showed so much love to episode number one. If you've not yet seen it, go check it out. We're talking about plants that you can, or seeds that you can plant and pretty much just forget. Nature takes care of the rest, which is awesome. And in this episode, I wanted to break down one of our systems that we do put into place to help us have an autopilot garden. One of the questions that was brought up in the first episode was, Luke, isn't autopilot gardening just a, an idea as a whole? So why do I need a series about it? Well, it's a really good question, and it's because yes, it is an idea as a whole, but the reason why I'm breaking it into a series is because there's so many different systems that I put into place to have an autopilot garden as a whole. See, if you don't like some of the systems that I, that I put forth in this series, the beauty of this is that you don't have to implement those systems and your garden will be slightly less autopilot than mine. Because as gardeners, I never wanna have a one size fits all because I realize as gardeners, none of us are one size fits all either. And we like optionality, we like having choices and we like saying, I like that, I don't like that. And so I wanted to set this, uh, this series in place so that you could pick and choose the stuff that you agreed with and just simply left aside the stuff that you didn't. Because where I'm coming at an autopilot garden is I wanna work as bare minimum as possible. Not because I'm lazy, but because I enjoy family time, I enjoy the summer because it's so short here in Michigan. You know, I enjoy spending time out in the beautiful garden, I enjoy harvesting, but I hate putting in the work because I've already put in so much work as it is. So my schedule's really short and the summer is really short. So why do I wanna spend the prime of my year toiling away in a garden? And so some people, might enjoy certain things that, that I don't enjoy. And that is why I wanna break it down into, uh, into systems because I think it's a lot easier for you guys to pick and choose what you like. So uh, in this episode, I'm going to talk about an, a very obvious system that we have in place that a lot of you have been asking us about, and that is mulch. Mulch is a system that we have in place that we've not talked a whole ton about, and I wanna break it down more because I think there's a lot to talk about mulch even though it's such a very simple topic. Wood chips. Wood chips are the, probably the most common choice for home gardeners because they're accessible and they're usually uh, fairly inexpensive, if not free. And so oftentimes gardeners will uh, call around to their local tree companies and they'll ask for wood chips, which is a great option and one that you should do because you should never have to pay for wood chips. Um, especially when I uh, tell you that uh, what, what you can get is actually what you're also probably buying from a lot of uh, landscaping companies. So these are both what the industry would consider wood chips. As shocking as it seems, both of these are wood chips, believe it or not. But the process that creates these versus the process that creates these is vastly different. And so when you're calling around your local tree companies, I want you to ask one simple question. What machine do you use? Or more specifically, do you use a shredder or do you use a chipper? And ironically, a shredder produces shreds. A chipper produces chips. The reason why tree companies will use one or the other is because uh, tree companies that use shredders, they're a high volume, don't care about quality type company. They wanna get through a tree, shred it up, move on to the next job. They take all those shreds, drop them off at a composting facility or uh, a landfill, just some type of waste management uh, company, and they don't really care what happens to these? Whereas these are often used and sold as a byproduct to landscaping companies. Meaning, yes, when you buy wood chips, natural wood chips from your local landscaping company for 20 to $30 a, a yard, you're buying these and we got them for free. <laughs> and it's simply because we ask around and ask what type of machine they use. Because so often in prime season, when they're just going through trees all the time, tree trimming companies will eventually exhaust all the local options uh, that are available to them to sell their, their chips to. And, they, and all the landscaping companies say, whoa, 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 no more chips, please. We can't get rid of all these. And they're just kind of, they're just taking up space now. So then where do they go? Well, they go to the same place where all the shreds go. They go to the composting facility, they go to the local waste management companies uh, that they have to pay to dump at. So instead of paying a dump, they'll actually drop them off at your house for free. You just have to join a waiting list and that usually takes no more than a week or so for your name to come around to the, to the uh, top of that list and then they call you 
and you get a huge dump truck load of free wood chips. And they're super high quality natural wood chips. You can't go wrong. But what makes these so more, so far more superior than these? All has to do with the shape. This is the shape you want to go for. Flat and wide. The reason why flat and wide makes an incredible mulch for an autopilot garden is because of layering. When you mulch them together, they stack on top of each other. And that stacking does many things. One, for soil, for soil quality and, and soil retention, it's very aerodynamic. There's very little air that's going to come. When it comes over top of these, it's going to simply whip right across the top. Whereas wind and stuff, when it, when it blows and you have, you're in places that has really strong wind, that is what degrades the soil over time. So having something that's very aerodynamic makes a great mulch. Another thing that does is it doesn't move when it rains. So often you see mulch and really heavy rains start moving. I can tell you we've had just torrential downpours. This stuff does not move because when it stacks, the water hits on top. It eventually does soak through, but it hits on top and it disperses the water very well. So it doesn't move. But how it makes a great autopilot garden mulch is the fact that it has incredible weed suppression. When it stacks on top like this, what happens is those, those stacks, they add weight to each other, they compress down, and they prevent the weeds from coming up because there's very little chance that a weed is going to be able to weasel its way up through all these different layers here. The different layers, you know, all these layers in like this or you know whatever, but stacking just like that, there's very little chance for a weed to be able to weasel its way up through, access sunlight, start photosynthesizing and growing. Whereas with these shreds, that's what you're going to get. And so often gardeners are stuck with mostly this stuff because they just forget that very simple question, which is chipper or shredder? There's no shame in asking. There's really no shame in asking. I've never had a company, I've asked several, several dozen companies. None of them have ever been offended when I ask them if they use a chipper or a shredder. It's just a simple question. And they'll usually tell you pretty honestly and straightforward what they use. So um, that, is, uh, that is wood chip mulch. And another thing that I wanna talk about is the mulches that are available to gardeners. You have plastic mulch. Plastic mulch is my, not my favorite method of all time, but it's my second favorite when it comes to an autopilot garden because um, some of the other mulches that I'm go going to go into, they create more work in the long run based on the nature of, of that type of mulch. So black plastic mulch. The only thing you have to be very careful of, assuming you don't care about the soil quality being degraded, because it will do that, um, it will kill off weed seeds, it will kill off the weeds very well but it will also kill off soil life. It will heat up because of the sun, it will heat up all that sun's energy and it will actually solarize the ground. So that's kind of a negative in my opinion since I'm an organic gardener, I wanna keep the soil life alive. The, the wood chip mulch actually holds a lot of beautiful air pockets and so that those air pockets will actually climate control the ground, keeping things cooler on hot days, whereas it'll do exactly the opposite with the black plastic mulch. So still works, just not great for an organic gardener trying autopilot gardening. Other mulches that are available to us are uh, things like uh, rubber mulch. I don't ever recommend using those, but again, they are available, so some people do choose them. They're used, they're a byproduct of the, uh, the tire recycling industry. They'll take tires and chop them all up. I don't like that because tires have been found to have heavy metals. They've been obviously uh, lots of chemicals, petrochemicals, things like that, leaching into the soil. Not very great for a mulch. Um, especially an organic garden, especially one creating food for your family, uh, just not so great. But those other mulches are out there. Um, but again, uh, you know, kind of one of those things that I don't choose. Other mulches that are available that I would not recommend, not because they're not natural and organic, but because they create more work later on in the form of weed seeds. So the, for, the purpose of, of an autopilot garden is to suppress weeds. You have mulches like hay, and you also have mulches like grass clippings that are great mulches, they just don't work great in an autopilot garden because of weed seeds. Grass clippings have grass seeds. Uh, straw does not have necessarily as many weed seeds, but it is the byproduct of the hay, uh, which is used as, as food for animals. Um, and those, those straw bales, usually 99.999% of the time will have straw seeds in the, in the hay 
in the in, in mixed within the hay and when you put that on the garden you'll find almost always hay will begin sprouting up everywhere so that leads to more weeding in the long run so uh, that is your those are your options in terms of of mulch and why i choose the wood chip mulch i want to talk about one more thing before we close on this system and that is how we arrange the mulch in our garden to help us out in the long run for an autopilot garden so you might be asking yourself Luke, why on earth did you put your pathway out here when you really don't need a pathway besides through the, through the walkways of the beds? Well, that was because this is part of our mulching system to an autopilot garden. You absolutely have to have a weed barrier that extends past your garden because so many gardeners simply want to mulch in between their beds or some gardeners don't mulch at all. And uh, if you don't mulch at all, well then you're definitely gonna have weeds but if you don't mulch past your garden and around the perimeter, what's going to happen is those weeds are going to grow up and it allows for very easily for weed seeds to carry over into your bed. It also allows for weed seeds to come under if, you're, if your grass butts right up against your bed here, the end of your bed, what will happen is those weed seeds will come right underneath your bed and you'll have weeds. So I typically say about two to three feet is a, is a pretty good weed barrier. Obviously more is better, but some people can't afford that much of a, of a, you know, of just mulching part of their yard because maybe they don't have that much space in their yard. So um, having, having that barrier is really important to prevent those stray weed seeds and the, and the weeds from, you know, creeping and crawling uh, via, um, the root system into your garden beds preventing you're creating you more hassle later on and creating just a giant weedy mess because once they're in your beds and they get established they're very difficult to get out so there you go there is your autopilot gardening episode number two on mulch i hope you all enjoy it. i hope you learn something new and i really do hope you'll implement this system obviously mulching is nothing new but it definitely plays a pivotal role in our autopilot garden so that's why i want to talk about that today Tomorrow, we're going to be bringing at you another system that we've talked obviously a ton about, but that's raised beds. And so it will not be a ton of new topics, but we're going to be talking about how raised beds play a role in our autopilot garden because they're definitely another important system that we have talked a lot about, but I want to bring it all in to the autopilot gardening uh, category or topic so that you all can kind of piece the puzzle together and have those, those, uh, those different systems that you can pick and choose from uh, that, that agree with you. So as always, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you throw a giant like up there for this series. I hope you all are enjoying it. And I really do hope that you all will continue to enjoy it in the future. We got a lot of great stuff planned and I'm really excited to announce as well that we're going to start going daily very soon. And um, we have some trips planned and some other kind of semi conflict uh, with our schedule that are going to be pretty difficult to plan uh, for daily videos for a little while, but coming uh, probably mid April, we're going to start going daily for sure. I'm going to try going daily as soon as I can, as soon as I have enough content to really bring great quality content out to you. And so I do hope that you throw a giant thumbs up for that. And if you've not yet subscribed, now would be a great time to do that because we're just getting started with our gardening season and we have amazing stuff in the works. So I'm really excited for everything that we have planned. I'm excited to see you on the next episode. And as always, this is Luke from the On My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll catch y'all later. See ya. Bye.